Every day in Manila, millions lose hours trapped in gridlock, their commutes dragging over three hours, as the nation bleeds 3% of its GDP to traffic alone. For decades, 115 million Filipinos scattered across 7,641 islands watched as neighbors raced ahead with metros and airports, while their own capital remained disconnected. But now, the Philippines is racing to shock the world with a $180 billion-plus wave of construction, from Southeast Asia's deepest subway to the most ambitious island-connecting bridges and a new international airport designed to end decades of being labeled the world's worst. How did one of Asia's most disconnected countries suddenly launch the boldest infrastructure overhaul of the century? The stakes are simple. Can a nation trapped by geography and history build its way to a new future? Starts here. Connecting a country made up of 7,641 islands has always been a daunting challenge. The Philippines' geography splinters communities, turning even short journeys into hours-long odysseys. For decades, a lack of modern roads, railways, and airports deepened this isolation, while political instability and chronic underinvestment kept progress stalled. As neighbors like Thailand and Malaysia rolled out metros and high-speed trains, Filipino commuters were left to navigate endless lines of cars, aging buses, and jeepneys. The cost was not just measured in frustration. Traffic congestion alone drains more than 3% of the nation's GDP every year. That is billions of dollars lost year after year in wasted fuel, missed work, and stalled growth. Ninoy Aquino International Airport, built in the 1980s, became infamous worldwide for overcrowding and delays, a symbol of how far behind the country had fallen. As the population surged past 115 million, the infrastructure gap grew into a national emergency, threatening job creation, investment, and the country's chance to compete in Southeast Asia. This became a national emergency. The call for change grew louder, pushing leaders to launch the Build, Build, Build pipeline worth more than $180 billion. The Philippines, long trapped by its geography and history, is now betting that massive modern infrastructure can finally break the cycle and build a future where opportunity is not limited by the map. Beneath the chaos of Metro Manila streets, an unprecedented engineering effort is underway. The Metro Manila subway, a $7 billion project, Isas is carving a 36-kilometer path underground, deeper than any other transit system in Southeast Asia with stations dropping as far as 70 meters below the surface. 17 stations will connect Quezon City to NAIA, promising to move up to 1.5 million people a day at full capacity. For the first time, a journey from NAIA to the city's northern edge could take just 35 minutes, a fraction of today's gridlocked commute. Inside the tunnels, teams work in high humidity and constant noise, guiding six Japanese-built tunnel boring machines through Manila's soft, waterlogged soil. One lead engineer, whose family has spent years trapped in Manila traffic, now spends 12-hour shifts deep below ground, monitoring pressure gauges and groundwater inflow. The machines advance slowly, sometimes only a dozen meters a day, while pumps run non-stop to keep the tunnels dry. Every meter forward means battling not just mud, but the ever-present risk of flooding and unexpected obstacles hidden beneath the city. Earthquake resilience is built into every segment. The subway's design draws on Japanese expertise. With base isolators, flexible tunnel linings, and real-time seismic sensors standing guard against the West Valley Fault, which runs perilously close to several stations. Above ground, traffic, and daily life continue. But below, the work never stops. Each day's progress is measured in centimeters, not kilometers. For the engineers and workers, every advance is a step toward a future where the city can finally breathe. North of Manila, a new airport is taking shape on 2,500 hectares of reclaimed land. 
Designed to handle 100 million passengers a year, the new Manila International Airport in Bulacan will eventually support six runways, doubling the country's main gateway capacity. San Miguel Corporation leads the project, promising automated baggage systems, biometric boarding, and a focus on sustainability. The vision is to turn the Philippines into a regional hub for business and tourism, though environmental and resettlement issues remain unresolved. Far to the south, Mindanao's first railway is under construction, funded by a $3.7 billion loan from China's Belt and Road Initiative. The initial 102 kilometers phase will link Tagum, Davao, and Digos, connecting 26 million people in a region that has never seen a train. For local farmers and exporters, the railway offers a chance to cut transport times and costs. One Davao entrepreneur, long reliant on trucks for mango shipments, calls it a lifeline, though land disputes continue to delay progress. On Luzon, the North-South Commuter Railway is building a 147 km corridor from Clark to Calamba, with trains reaching 160 km per hour. Backed by Japanese and Asian Development Bank funding, the project aims to shrink commutes and create a mega-region for workers and businesses. Bridges and expressways are redrawing the map. The 32 km Panagamaris Negros Bridge will be the country's longest. The Panguil Bay Bridge has cut a two-and-a-half-hour ferry ride to seven minutes by car. Public-private expressways now carry hundreds of thousands of people daily, making swift, reliable travel part of everyday life. Every major project in the Philippines' construction boom faces a common enemy, delay. Timelines that promise completion by 2028 or 2029 often slip by two to five years, sometimes more. Right-of-way is the most stubborn bottleneck, acquiring land needed for tracks, stations, and highways. Negotiations with landowners, legal disputes, and community protests can freeze progress for months or even years. On the Mindanao Railway, entire stretches sit idle while compensation cases wind through the courts. In Metro Manila, Relocating utilities beneath crowded avenues adds months of work before tunneling can even begin. Skilled labor is in short supply, forcing contractors to import engineers and technicians from Japan, China, and Korea. Typhoons and earthquakes disrupt schedules every year, washing out roads, flooding excavations, and requiring costly repairs. Reality check. Even when construction surges ahead, these obstacles combine to push completion dates further into the future. For every skyline-changing project, there is an equally real story of setbacks, rerouting, and the slow grind of building through adversity. The price tag is staggering. More than $180 billion in projects are now in the pipeline, with annual infrastructure spending peaking above 7% of GDP one of the highest ratios in Southeast Asia. Behind the scenes, the Philippines is stitching together a patchwork of foreign loans, public budgets, and private partnerships. Japan through JICA is the largest external lender, backing the subway and commuter rail with low interest loans that stretch over decades. China's Belt and Road Initiative funds the Mindanao Railway, but at higher rates, and with stricter repayment terms. Private giants like San Miguel Corporation take on riskier ventures, such as the new airport, through public-private partnerships that promise speed but hinge on future profits. Despite the momentum, not every project is fully financed, gaps remain, and debt levels have climbed. Government obligations now hover above 60% of GDP, and repayments will stretch for a generation. The country is walking a tightrope, balancing the need for rapid progress against the risk of over-reliance on foreign lenders and rising fiscal pressure. The stakes are clear. Every borrowed peso is a bet that new infrastructure will deliver enough growth to pay itself back. Across Southeast Asia, the race to modernize is relentless. Bangkok's rail network stretches over 200 kilometers 
crisscrossing the city with eight lines. Kuala Lumpur's system is nearly as extensive, while Singapore's Changi Airport is gearing up to serve 85 million passengers a year. In comparison, the Philippines is just now laying the groundwork to join this league. The Metro Manila subway, still only 30 to 40% finished, is the country's first true underground metro, and it will not open its full length until the early 2030s, at best. The new Manila International Airport in Bulacan, designed for 100 million passengers annually, is still in its early stages. With land preparation and foundation work visible, but main terminals years from completion. On paper, the scale is impressive. Infrastructure spending has jumped to over 7% of GDP, one of the highest rates in the region. But the hard truth is that while construction is surging, the Philippines remains a generation behind its neighbors in total rail length, airport capacity, and regional connectivity. The catch-up is real, but the finish line keeps moving, and every delay risks widening the gap just as fast as new bridges and tunnels close it. Today, construction cranes outnumber promises, proof that momentum finally outweighs inertia. But as billions flow and deadlines slip, the true test is more than concrete and steel. Can the Philippines transform ambition into access for 115 million people? The answer will define its place in Asia for decades to come.